Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to my TBR for Japanese June. Now last year Japanese June was a month-long reading event held by Vanessa from Trubosky, Mercedes from Mercy's Bookish Musings and Sabrina from Unmanaged Mischief. I will link their three channels down below and some of their Japanese June videos. And last year I had a really wonderful time watching all of the videos about Japanese literature that they were reading in the month of June. I didn't join in last year because I was really really new to making booktube videos and joining in things sounded scary so I didn't. But I thought this year I might as well read Japanese literature in the month of June. Vanessa, Mercedes, Mercedes and Sabrina aren't officially doing it this year but I know Sabrina said she might kind of unofficially do it and read some Japanese literature in June but I thought regardless I would get through lots of the Japanese books that have been on my TBR for a while. As I'm sure you've noticed I don't normally do TBRs but I thought for a kind of different structured reading month like this I thought I would. So let's talk about the books I'm going to read. I'm going to be reading is this little black classic which is The Book of Tea by Kakuza Okakura. I'm sorry I probably pronounced that wrong, I will probably do that for the rest of this video, apologies. There is no need for me to explain why I decided to buy this book. It's called The Book of Tea. So this is a book written by a Japanese author in 1906. It was written in English, not in Japanese, and it is apparently a book about the importance of the tea ceremony in Japan, and at the same time is a kind of criticism of the way that many people in the West view Japanese society and culture at the time. So it sounds really, really interesting and it's called The Book of Tea so I think I will definitely enjoy this and I'm curious to see what it is like. I'm not certain whether it's fiction or non-fiction or kind of a blend of both but we shall see. Next I'm going to be reading Tanazaki's The Makioa Sisters and this version is, is translated by Edward G. Sidersticker. So I have read one thing by Tanazaki before and that was Some Prefer Nettles which is a much shorter book, a novella, and I really enjoyed Some Prefer Nettles but I found the ending a bit disappointing but I loved his writing style so I'm definitely curious to read more by him and this is a much bigger book so I feel like the ending is probably less going to be less rushed. This book is apparently about four sisters in a sort of struggling family who are declining and it is about their relationships with each other. It was written in the 40s and is apparently a about life in Japan just before the Second World War, so that kind of historical aspect I think should be really interesting. Next I'm going to read Life of a Counterfeiter by Yusushi Anu, and this edition is translated by Michael Emmerich, who is someone who I know has translated quite a lot of Banami Oshimoto, who I really like, and I really like his translation, so that's exciting. And this is a couple of short stories by Yashu Inu, sort of three short stories of his from the 1950s collected into one edition. I've read one thing by Yashu Inu before, and that was The Hunting Gun, which is a kind of novella of his, and I absolutely loved that. I thought it was brilliant, really powerful, wonderful characters, just so well done. So I'm really, really excited to get to this. I think he's got a brilliant writing style. From the previous thing I've read of his, The Hunting Gun, he has a really brilliant way of kind of capturing people and their relationships so this should be really exciting and I'm very interested to read this soon. Moving on to some modern books and some books I know less about, I'm going to read Yoko Ajawa's Revenge. This I'm quite excited about, I do not know very much about this book and I know no next to nothing about the author but I spotted this in a bookshop and thought it sounded really interesting. Apparently this book begins with a woman going into a bakery and she goes into this bakery on the same day every year to buy a treat for her son's birthday except that her son has actually been dead for many years and that sounds like a very intriguing opening. Apparently the book is dark and complicated and apparently quite chilling so that sounds quite exciting and I am very intrigued to get to this soon. This book was first published in Japanese in the 90s and this edition was translated by Stephen Snyder. Next I'm going to read Hiromi Kawakawa's Strange Weather in Tokyo and this is translated by Alison Markham Powell. I actually got this for my birthday, I think I forgot to mention it in my birthday book haul but I'm very very excited to read this. This was another one of those books that I kept on seeing when I was working at Foils last year and it always looked really good but I never wanted it quite enough to buy it but now I own it and I'm really excited to read it. Apparently it's about a young woman who runs into one of her old school teachers and sort of falls in love with him and it's about their relationship. I have heard some really good things and some mixed things about this but I am certainly very keen to read it and intrigued and if nothing else the title is beautiful. And next I'm going to read a Haruki Murakami and that book is going to be Colourless Zaguru Tazeki and His Years of Pilgrimage. Now I've read two Haruki Murakami books before, one of which was Norwegian Wood which I loved and the other one was Kafka on the Shore which I really didn't love. I found it very very weird and very unsettling and there were things I liked but a lot of it I just found it was too weird for me. I like my magic realism in slightly smaller doses and mostly in short stories and it was just a bit too unsettling. I think all the Oedipal stuff was just just too much for me. I just found it like 
unpleasant to read. Regardless, I have sort of mixed feelings about Murakami and I hear mixed things about this and I have heard some people say that the presentation of women in this book is not wonderful. But regardless, I'm quite intrigued to read this. It has quite an interesting premise. It's about a man who fell out, who had these really close friends at school and then they all turn their backs on him for some reason and then he kind of tries to find out exactly why years later. So it sounds quite intriguing and I always enjoy books that deal with like the passage of time and deal with people seeing people who have they haven't seen for a while. That's like a, a theme, I, a little motif that I really enjoy in books, so I'm very intrigued to read this. And next I'm going to read Amrita by Banana Yoshimoto, translated by Russell F. Wasden. Now this is my last Banana Yoshimoto, which makes me really sad. I love her, she is one of my favourite living authors, and I have read every other book of hers that's been translated into English except for this. So once I have done with this, this is my last Banana Yoshimoto, until she writes more or more is translated into English, because I think she has quite a lot of other novels that have been written in Japanese but haven't been translated. I love her writing so much, I think it's absolutely brilliant, and I love the way she deals with things and the kind of observations, it's just it's just beautiful and I have loved everything of hers that I've read so I'm very very excited for this and kind of also scared because I've been sort of saving up my Banana Yoshimoto I haven't read anything by her for about six months now because I've been like saving this one so I'm very very excited and I'm sure it will be marvellous I am definitely very keen to read it just because she is wonderful she is so wonderful apparently this book deals with the sort of family fallout after the death of an actress in mysterious circumstances so it sounds very very intriguing and as always my expectations for Banana Yoshimoto are very very high I'm sure this will be beautiful. And while we're talking about Banana Yoshimoto this month for Japanese June I might also reread Kitchen by Banana Yoshimoto. I have read this before about a year and a half ago it was my favourite book of last year and I think it is beautiful wonderful I think it is so so brilliant and it's quite short and won't take me very long so I thought I would reread it because I really love rereading things and it just it's just this wonderful glorious and I should be able to reread it very quickly and it would just be be a really lovely a really lovely few hours of rereading this wonderful um book which is made up of one kind of long short story slash novella called Kitchen and then a shorter story called Moonlight Shadow I love both of them but especially Kitchen I love the way Banana Yashimoto deals with themes of grief and I love the way she uses food as the kind of really important significant motif and as a way to bring characters together I just think her writing is wonderful and this book was the first thing I read of hers and it really made me fall in love with her writing style and her as a as a writer just her books are just glorious so I'm definitely going to reread this just for fun this month which should be really great because yes Kitchen is wonderful. As you may have noticed from my wrap-ups I have a couple of monthly challenges that I do every month this month as I'm doing Japanese June I will not be putting out any books from my TBR bowl however I thought I would still try and read a non-fiction book and I thought for that one I would read this which is A History of Japan from Stony Age to Superpower by Kenneth Henshaw. I have actually read this before, I read this when I was about 17 but I don't really remember most of it so I thought it would be interesting to read it again and just give myself a little overview of Japanese history because I do find it really really fascinating and I, I remember I really enjoyed and found this really interesting when I read it at the time but it was quite a while ago now so I could do with a recap so that should certainly be very interesting. So there we have it, that is my TBR for Japanese June, that is about nine books so that is slightly under what I normally read in a month, I normally read sort of between 10 and 15 so I will see what happens if I want to read any more I might try and go to the library and see what Japanese literature they have there or I might just finish up the month with some non-Japanese books however I thought it would be a good opportunity to take the month of June to get through the Japanese books on my TBR and I'm very excited to read all of these especially Kitchen even though that's the one I've read before <laughs> so yes please in the comments do let me know if you enjoy Japanese literature and what are your favorites and if you might also want to participate in Japanese June I quite like this idea of having a structured month where you read a particular kind of book and I'm thinking about potentially hosting a Victorian month at some point later on in the year so please do let me know in the comments if any of you would be interested in joining in a kind of Victorian themed reading month later on in the year and I will have a think more about that. Anyway I'll be back soon with another video and in the meantime happy reading!